All right. Mike and Fancy Dave back, the Art Bros, bringing you another episode. And this time we're talking about some... Wheaties. Some Wheaties, yes. Brought to you by Wheaties. The <laughs> Breakfast of Champions and Titans. <laughs> so guys, um, this week uh, we're talking about Thomas Cole and the Titans Goblet. Which, if you're looking at the screen right now... Is the ultimate pimp cup. It is the ultimate pimp cup. Come a little closer to me. It is the ultimate pimp cup, that's true. Yeah, so I imagine this. Um, uh, Gre- the Greeks said that before man, Titans used to roam the earth. You know, so I can imagine this. Before titan, the gods. Yes, before gods. Titans, this Titan in, in himself was pretty pimp. Because mm-hmm. he had a goblet and he kind of just left it there. He didn't put a napkin over it because someone could drug him. But you know what? It's fine. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Guys, uh, no this coaster. Is, yeah, no, co- no coaster, man. Respect, respect the. Anyways, so we are talking about Thomas Cole. Thomas Cole was an amazing landscape painter. One of the founders of the Hudson River School of Art it was like a movement mm-hmm. where it really brought landscape painting into the prestige of American art in like the 1800s. So he's one of the co-founders of that movement. Uh, if you Google him, you'll see he he does he did a lot of landscapes. And he, he led a bunch of artists in the same... They all, they all have like this majesty towards mm-hmm. them. All these landscape paintings have this majesty and all this. Um, they all seem to be centered around the Catskills of the Adirondacks. This, the Hudson nature. River area. N- nature too, yeah. This one, on the other hand, I don't know where it's taking place because there's a giant goblin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you said this was yeah. the cover to a fantasy book, like I would not doubt you at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does look like the cover of like a fantasy or like you know like um, you know I feel like I should be playing World of Warcraft or something. <laughs> yeah. So what we have here is a painting. It's oil on canvas. It's not too big actually. Forty nine by forty one centimeters. That's pretty small. It's pretty small. Here I am thinking that it's it's a big one, but especially when it's named the Titan's Goblet. Exactly. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> A little counterproductive there. It's hanging up the, the, the Met over in New York, if you guys want to check it out. And, well, I love this piece because it's not considered surreal art, but in so many ways it could be. It Especially really... considering how early it would have been for that movement to have kicked in. Mm-hmm. To that, yeah, and this piece actually was really appreciated by surrealist uh, artists, you know, when they showed up in the 1930s and, and 40s and whatnot. Uh, so what we have is kind of like this dreamlike landscape, or as as what what I heard it referred to as it was over here, this new kind of landscape, which which was a uh, what's the words I'm looking for? They were like spiritual landscapes. Mm-hmm. You know that's what Thomas Cole he went he went to Europe. He came back and he just came back this changed man and he started his landscape started having so like, he's one of those college students that just got back from backpacking through yes, Europe you don't know man you, <laughs> you don't know, know about things life. I saw <laughs> <laughs> the things that I witnessed man yeah so he, he literally came back and his landscape painting had changed from like these beautiful scenes of nature to like these ar- alleg- allegorical statements um, which we have right here one of them is the Titan's Goblet uh, what I love the most about this piece is the perspective well, not the perspective, but the scale. Yeah. Like this huge, huge tree-like structure is so big that the town on the bottom of it is so minuscule yeah. compared to it. And that's so creepy because imagine how how small the humans are com- compared to this thing. Um, it seems to be taking place... I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go ahead and take place before airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe... The people living in this town, this is the thing that sort of like interests me the most. The people living in this town or the people in those, how the hell did those people in the boats on top get there, first off? <laughs> 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 but uh, the people living in this town, I don't think they know it's a goblet. So It's just big structure on yeah, top of us. Exactly, yeah. And they, they wouldn't be able to see it unless they kind of went... You know, far away as far into the back sky, as the like, viewer. exactly. Yeah, uh, it's the viewer could possibly be like a giant mm-hmm. looking at like, hey, that's where I left my cup. <laughs> so yeah, fancy Dave, what do you think about this piece? Mm. Um, I guess it's trying to make a statement about 
I guess, more of a mythological viewpoint of, you know, creation, I guess. Yeah. As I saw in the uh, Wikipedia article. Oh, snap. I kept uh, mentioning the Ygratzel, the world tree of Norse myth or something like that. Oh, the, the tree of life? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we all know what the tree of life is. We saw, you know, we've seen Disney movies. We saw the Animal Kingdom. So I guess it's kind of a similar theme. It is a similar theme. And I guess the water is kind of like the branches giving life to, you know, the civilization down there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's Because it's kind of like, it's not flowing like you think water would be, but it's kind of like a tentacle in a weird way, the way it's going down like that. It is. It's like, it's spraying. Yeah. Down into Kind of like roots. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? I, what's interesting? How does the water keep replenishing itself if it's spilling over? Well, if it was from a titan, I guess. <laughs> God magic? I don't know. <laughs> what if this thing is just like, what if this is like where the titans wash their face? Yeah. <laughs> or their feet. Or their feet? Yeah, their feet or something like that. Yeah. This is, honestly, this is an amazing, like, for me, fantasy fantasy piece, mythological piece. Because it just gets you wondering about if this was like a cup of some mm-hmm. sort, where did the titan go? You know? Or maybe there was never a titan to begin with, and this structure was that just, just created. happens to look like this. Yeah, it just happens to look like it. There are so many things that you can interpret it as, but that's my favorite part about it. Mm-hmm. Everyone sees it differently. I see it as like a forgotten, like relic mm-hmm. of a, a time long past. That like, let's say one day the humans are gone. The only thing left is like a Poland spring bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, someone finds it and they're like, "What did this bottle come from?" Well, I'm kind of seeing the same thing. Like, you know, this could have been some. Um, ordinary household object for like a, a titan from long ago and now it's being like referred to as like this big big beautiful structure that people live on and sustains life like, for people and stuff I don't know how valid this would be I'm just thinking about this right now but maybe it's also trying to say something about like how we're at the mercy of nature because titans were considered kind of primordial like more tied in with nature rather than the Greek gods that came later right mm-hmm. so I guess we're kind of at the mercy of nature to, to provide its bounty for us. Really? So, because if you notice, everything else around the area is very rocky. This is the only area that has green pasture or anything on it. True. Very true, you're right. So we're kind of at the mercy to, like, you know, gather around things that have, like, life and things to that. Yeah. Left by predecessors. Yeah, true that. True. Um, it's like the whole Apple of Eden thing in, in mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed. But either way, um, yeah. And my favorite piece, I just love that there are people sailing boats on top. How did you get there? <laughs> get down from there. What's wrong with you? You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. I'm just thinking like little rock climbers going up there or anything like that. Yeah, so um, my favorite thing about this painting, again, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The way that the humans seem to just accept that it's there. They don't, they don't seem to question it or anything. They have sailboats living on it. They have a town right under it. So mm-hmm. it's just like, maybe it's a commentary on how we sh- should live with nature rather than try to dominate it. Mm-hmm. You know, like how people can live on a mountain and like, you know, live off the mountain rather than blast through it for some sort of railroad. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah, so that's the biggest thing. I mean, like this connection to nature. Was well, the Industrial Revolution in full gear by this time? Uh, the 18, early 1800s? Mm-hmm. I think that came a little later. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it came a little later. Not too, not too. I think right when Cole died, it was really picking up in the 1850s. Mm-hmm. I think that's when it was really picking up. But um, yeah, so the call to nature, live with it, right, and 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 observe its beauty. Yeah. Because the only reason we're 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 if this were just another mountain, we like would if not you wanted to make this look down. ominous, you would have set this like a night with like a. Probably no moon in the background, but yeah. he said it was like the most romantic thing you could put with like a setting sun back there. Yeah, setting sun, sailboats, yeah, some uh, lights reflecting on the water, yes. <laughs> listening to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I love this painting. That's, I, I tend to love all the paintings we do here on Art Froze. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I'm good. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, with what we we've talked about here. So, guys, again, Thomas Cole, and uh, that's about it. So, that's about it, guys. Thanks for listening to Art Bros. We'll see you next time. Always. <laughs>